and welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. Not much really I can report on this week. It's been a good one. It's had some emotional ups and downs, but overall it's been good. That is also reflected in my reading. Let's get into it. I finished three things this week. Mostly all over last weekend, but that's okay. So the first thing I finished was Spy Family, Volume 1, the first manga in the series. I've been hearing a lot about this. Uh, so I'm going to give a quick synopsis in case you haven't heard of it. The gentleman on the cover is a spy, and his new assignment is to get close to a man. But this man's only interaction with the outside world is his son's private boarding school. So now he has to get a child and a wife and get the child into this elite private boarding school. Goes to the orphanage and meets a little girl who ends up being a telepath. And she's very awestruck hearing his thoughts and finding out that he is a spy and wants to go home with him. And so when he's thinking in his head, I'm really looking for a six year old, she pipes up, I'm six. And he's like, oh, really? So, goes from there, eventually meets a woman, and it all works out that they end up doing a marriage of convenience. And it was just a lot of fun. It's one of those kind of zany mangas, and I'm looking forward to continuing with this series. And then the next thing I finished was One Week in the Library, a graphic novel. This was something I picked up a while ago, back actually when I picked up the first volume of Rat Queens, because library, it's a key word thing that pops out to me. So the premise of this is the librarian, it goes through like a week in the library. And it starts off really interesting, has some different stories, and you get to see this library that is like out in the universe but connects to every story possible. And then it starts to go, I guess, more meta. And in the end, it didn't really work for me. The author himself makes a cameo at the end, and i that's kind of where I went, wait, what? Because otherwise it was introducing some interesting things, interesting concepts, and then it was like a shift. I'm not certain if I would pick up something by this author again, just because I didn't enjoy the ending. But the artwork is pretty. Like, here's an example of the librarian saying how he was born. I tried something new. And then, because I just needed those cozy vibes, and I guess I found that I like historical fiction, so, or more appropriately, historical romance. And I read The Autumn Bride by Anne Gracie. This is my first time reading her. It was something that had been listed on my TBR, and since we're in autumn, the word autumn caught my attention. It was a lot of fun. I don't think this is going to work for a lot of people who like historical romance, because the romance is a slow burn, like very, very slow. Like six chapters in, and the couple hadn't even met each other yet. It was still getting to the setup of them getting into the situation where then they will meet. For this story, it is a enemies to lovers arc, and there is mis the miscommunication trope, specifically because the heroine does not want to share her past with the hero. So you, the reader, know it, but the heroine is like, nope, this is my line, I'm, I'm not telling you uh, that, that's not your business. So the hero has to go find it out through other means. I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to continuing on with this series. I guess I didn't give you a summary at all. Governess Abby Chantry finds out her sister is in a brothel at the very beginning, goes to get her out, and then the family that she's working for won't allow her sister to stay there, and so she quits. They run out of money, and she ends up going into an mansion that's kind of run down but she goes into this mansion in order to steal something because her sister's sick and when she gets there she finds the lady of the house in bed 
and her servants are basically starving her. She's been sick, and they're not cleaning the place. They're just taking advantage of her. And the two hatch a plan to have Abby and her sister and two other women who they've adopted as sisters to come live with them, or to come live in the mansion with the lady. At the same time, the hero, who is named Max, Lord Davenham, the lady of the house is his aunt, and he has been abroad trying to rebuild the family's fortunes, pay the debts that his uncle had left behind, that he decided never to talk about his, the amount of debts to his aunt, so she doesn't know why he's left. And he returns back after receiving a letter from one of his aunt's friends saying that somebody has been taken advantage from of her, and he immediately thinks that it is Abby and her sisters not knowing the situation, even though his aunt is very quick to say, no, they, they've only been with me a couple weeks. They are the ones who saved me. But that explains the hostility he has for Abby when he first meets her, because he thinks that she's the one taking advantage of his aunt, and then he knows that Oh, and his aunt's calling the four girls her nieces, and he knows that there are no such people in his aunt's life. So, lots of questions there. But I had a lot of fun with it. And then, I read another chapter of Slaying the Dragon. And, because I was still in the historical fiction vibes, I decided to do another reread of Pride and Prejudice. And this has been working out for me really well this week, since... I haven't had a lot of brain power to focus on reading, so it's great to reread something I love because I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. And because I've been feeling better mentally, I'm actually going to give you a TBR for my next week because I am finishing Pride and Prejudice this weekend. I have to finish Slaying the Dragon this week because it has to go back to the library. I've already had it for four months. I'm 10 chapters away from finishing, so the chapters are actually pretty easy to read. They're not long, and they have a good flow. Ben, I would definitely read some another history book by Ben Riggs because he, he writes really well. It's very personable, but have to finish this this week. And then, and then, for... My TBR, I am hoping to pick up my two buzzword prop books. If you are new to my channel, I did two buzzword lists. I will put the videos up somewhere. I did one straight from my physical TBR, and then after being challenged by Maya from Bookward Dreams to do a science fiction one, I went through and did a science fiction one. So, from my physical TBR, I have Bring Me a Unicorn by Anne Morrow Lindbergh, which, who is the wife of Charles Lindbergh, the famous pilot. And this is supposed to be Letters and Diaries. So it's a nonfiction. Unicorn was the only animal I had on my physical TBR anywhere. So I know it's unicorns aren't real, but I'm using it. And then for my science fiction one, I have Fox Hunt by Rim Wickmore. The description, I'm just going to read it because it's not very long and otherwise I don't remember off the top of my head what this is about. So, in a lush solar punk future, plants have stripped most of the poison from the air and bounty hunters keep resources, keep resource hoarders in check. Orpheus only wants to be a traveling singer, famed and adored. She has her share of secrets, but she has she has her share of secrets, but she's no energy criminal. So why does a bounty hunter want her dead? Not just any bounty hunter, but the wolf. Most fearsome of all the order of the vengeful wild. Orpheus will call in every <laughs> Orpheus will call in every favor she has to find out, seeking answers while clinging to her pride and fending off the hunters of the wild. But she isn't the only one at risk. Every misstep endangers the enemies she turns into allies, and the allies she brings into danger. There are worse monsters than the wolf hiding in this new green world. So, sounded intriguing, and for the month of October, it's to have a 
animal in the title. So there you go. Is Rachel going to read her TBR or not? That is the question. For my writing wrap up, I did not write this week, but I have been preparing the stream for the Worldwide Ragathon. So that was kind of my writing focus time. And I'm super excited. <laughs> I no clue what I'm gonna be working on. And for the same thing with NaNoWriMo coming up, I have no clue what I'm gonna be working on. I am a pantser. And whenever I've tried to plan out a novel or plan out a writing project, it has crushed and burned quickly. So I'm just having fun and enjoying the process. And then for other media, I really enjoyed the interview between Mer Lafferty and Desi Daria Mesa. Yep, Desi Daria Mesa on her podcast. And it was more of like a writer's kind of interview, so getting to find out more of the process of it. And I didn't realize that Mendel Punk Bruja is written or in, is set in Kansas City, which is right where I grew up, I mean, very, very close to where I grew up, did many day trips, and I've always been interested to see, or I've always been interested to read more fiction set in Kansas City. So Mesa was doing family history, and that's what got her started um, for this book. And so I'm really excited to read it. It, it was one of those interviews that I, I just went, okay, and I now go to the bookstore to pick up the book. I've only heard Kristen at Kristen L. SFF Reader talk about it, and I don't think it worked for her. So rip, we'll see. I don't know how quickly I'm going to get to this, but I am very excited to have a Kansas City book. I wasn't planning to do a quick mini haul. That has been my week 41. And again, looking forward to 42, uh, especially this next weekend. Again, I will be a host over at the Worldwide Write-A-Thon, and I will put the link down below so you can come and say hi and come join us. It is going to be Saturday the 22nd, and our stream is 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I will be on the stream with Jen from Jen's Bookshelf, Dolores Medell from Dolores Medell, and Shannon from SD Houston. Very excited to talk with all of them and to maybe do some writing. Thank you and have a great day.